So chapter one um, of the intelligent investor is called speculation results to be expected. Um, and in this chapter, uh, he really sets the tone for the rest of the book um, by distinguishing between investing and what he calls speculation or, you know, to put it more bluntly, gambling. Uh, he argues that investing is a rational and calculated approach to the market. Well, speculation is, like I said, it's basically gambling. So just taking your money, going to a casino, putting it all on black or putting, putting it all on, on red on the, um, on the roulette wheel and leaving it all to, to chance um, and having, you know, kind of no insight into or any kind of rational thought as to, you know, why something is going to go up or down, right? Um, so Graham defines an investor as someone who analyzes stocks and other assets to determine their underlying value and who make investment decisions based on that analysis. Uh, in contrast, he defines a speculator as someone who makes investment decisions based simply on market trends and predictions. Um, and one of the key points here is that investors should focus on long-term value of their investments rather than short-term market movements. When he argues that the stock market is inherently volatile and that short-term fluctuations are often driven by emotion rather than fundamentals. And remember, he's writing this book um, back in, you know, 1949. Um, so the market environment was much different then. There wasn't, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't social media, there wasn't 24 seven breaking news. Um, so, you know, the, the, like we see today, you know, you turn on the TV, like I said, interest rates, inflation, the war in Ukraine, um, you know, the geopolitical tension with China, all of these things cause the market to move up and down every single day. And all these things take more and more of our, uh, I'll call it willpower to ignore as long-term fundamentally focused investors. Um, so, you know, I think just this, this chapter, um, has even more relevance today is kind of the, the new cycle gets shorter and just our attention span gets shorter as well. Um, just getting back to a couple other points in, in the chapter to Graham uses an example of a man called Mr. Market. Um, it's a famous, uh, kind of, um, I guess, well, you want to call it symbol, um, for a lot of people uh, on wall street and, you know, Mr. Market, he offers to buy or sell stocks at different prices each day based on his mood. Um, so whether he's happy or he's angry, he's sad. And Graham argues that investors should not be swayed by Mr. Market's mood swings, but should instead focus on the underlying value of the stocks that they own. Um, and another important concept that he introduces in chapter one is the idea of risk and risk management. And he argues that investors should be aware of the risks involved in investing, but that they should also be aware of the risks of not investing. So sitting on the sidelines um, and Graham believes that over the long term, the risks of, of not investing um, outweigh the risks of investing. And that's where, you know, inflation comes in. So if inflation is rising by two, three, four percent a year and your money is sitting in cash earning zero percent, the actual buying power of your um, of your money goes down um, so that, you know, the, the, the risk of being out of the market is in some ways worse than, you know, the risks of, of being in the market. Um, and I think, you know, overall, the chapter one of the Intelligent Investor really lays the groundwork for Graham's philosophy of value investing. Um, he, he emphasizes the importance of rational analysis and in a, in a long-term perspective and uh, cautions against getting caught up in short-term market trends. And he, he uses it with this famous example of, uh, of, of Mr. Market. So like a really good, um, I think foundation for the book, really interesting way um, to kind of, you know, start to think about long-term investing. And I think Graham does a, a, a really good job of uh, kind of grabbing your attention um, right from the get-go. Um, so that's chapter one. Let's, uh, let's go down to uh, chapter two. Okay. Chapter two uh, of The Intelligent Investor is titled the investor and inflation. Um, and in this chapter, Graham discusses the impact of, lo and behold, inflation on investments and the importance of protecting assets against the effects of inflation. Um, Graham argues that <clears throat> inflation is one of the greatest threats uh, to the value of an investor's assets and that investors must take steps to protect themselves. I've heard uh, inflation be described as the silent thief, um, right? It's just kind of in your pocket. You don't really know that it's there, um, but it's making your money less valuable over time. And uh, he begins this, this chapter, chapter two, um, by 
defining inflation as the gradual reduction in the purchasing power of money. Again, that idea of the silent thief. And he argues that inflation erodes the value of both cash and fixed income investments over time, and that investors must take steps to protect, to protect themselves against these effects by investing in the market. And one of the key ways to protect against inflation um, is to take your assets that have the potential to appreciate in value um, or invest in assets that have, uh, you know, the potential to appreciate in value over time. <clears throat> and Graham recommends investing in, in stocks that have a history of strong earnings growth. Um, so earnings, you know, what a company makes quarter over quarter, year over year, as well as investing in real estate, um, which can also appreciate in value and demand increases over time. Um, another way to protect against inflation um, in ass uh, is to invest in assets that are directly linked to inflation. Um, so Graham recommends um, investing in, in high or in inflation protected bonds, which provide a, a return that is uh, adjusted for inflation. So basically the, the bond pays you a, an interest payment that resets based on what inflation is um, you know, month over month and, and year over year. Um, he also, in this chapter, discusses the impact of inflation on the dividends, um, arguing that companies with strong earnings growth are better positioned to maintain or increase their dividends in an inflationary environment. And, you know, actually, studies have shown that companies that historically pay dividends or increase their dividends over time actually um, turn out to be a better investment than companies who don't do that. Um, so, you know. Along those lines, he does recommend investing in companies that has, uh, you know, a history of consistent dividend payments um, and, and, like I said, strong earnings growth to be able to facilitate those those dividend payments. And the last point that he makes in the book um, is he, again, emphasizes the importance of diversification and protecting against inflation. And he, ar he argues that here again. Owning a mix of stock bonds and real estates um, and spreading them out over, over these different buckets um, across industries. To inflation is like anything else that it, it can impact one industry more than another. Like we've seen recently um, with energy prices after the war in Ukraine and, you know, and it, the price of oil spiked, I don't know what it was, like you know, over $100. Uh, inflation really hit the energy sector really hard. We saw it in other areas too and housing and everything like that, but inflation, um, doesn't always hit everything all at once. So the, the idea of diversification is just as just as critical it is um, in, in the other um, parts of your portfolio when you're investing. Diversification is key. Um, so to kind of summarize here, uh, chapter two of The Intelligent Investor highlights the importance of protecting against inflation in order to preserve the value of an investor's assets over time. And uh, by investing in assets that have the potential to, pre to appreciate in value and by diversifying assets across different asset classes, investors can protect themselves against the impacts of inflation on their portfolio. So again, another chapter that, you know, really hits home in this current environment, inflation's in every single headline in 2022. Now in 2023, inflation is still, uh, is key. And then, you know, Graham towards the wisdom, um, in chapter two of this book, uh, they ring true today. So, uh, that's it for chapter two. Let's take a look at chapter three.